Okay, uh, so as Michael said, I'm going to talk about the Nova V3 API. Um, so hopefully by now everyone's familiar with what Nova is, basically a compute service and managing hypervisors. This is where you go when you want uh, a server. Um, so why do we have a V3 API? Why are we working on a new version? Initially started in Grizzly when we were trying to clean up the V2 API because people were noticing that there's lots of things wrong with it, um, bad return values, that kind of stuff. And we started to clean it up and then we realized that we couldn't actually do a whole lot of cleanup because there would be backwards incompatible changes and that would be bad for people who already have written REST client programs against it. Um, so initially started out as mainly as a cleanup process rather than um, something that was going to have major changes in it. So some of the issues we found with the V2 API, um, so incorrect return codes as I mentioned, the XML and JSON representations of how you talk to the REST API were quite different in quite a few places. In other places the XML was just wrong and didn't work, so it's probably a sign that it wasn't actually used a lot. Um, just bad REST design. Um, there was a, a custom loader for the um, extensions, um, and so they had to kind of sit in a specific place. The classes had to be named in a very specific manner just because of the way the, uh, the plugin loader worked. Uh, there was a lot of inconsistencies in the, the way that the naming of extensions was done um, and the parameters, um, mainly because uh, there was no real documentation on how to write extensions. So people would kind of just make it up as they go or they'd get an existing one and cut and paste and just change the little bits they thought. And you could see the history of where an extension came from based on where they kind of copied it from originally. Uh, the other issue was that V2 extensions had no version number. We had kind of a date time stamp in them, but no one kind of really knew how to use that as a client and when it should be updated. So when an uh, extension was updated, you couldn't tell as a client um, whether or not this new uh, functionality was actually in the cloud that you're accessing. So instead what was done was that every time someone added some new functionality, they would actually create a new extension and they would extend the extension and you could tell whether new functionality was there because that new extension now existed and that was really clunky and you know, you'd make a little change and suddenly you have yet another extension that you have to, um, to add to, to Nova. Um, another issue was when you create an extension, you often had to modify the core code because that was the only way to get it to process extra parameters you'd pass and, and those kind of things and that was pretty gross. So you had, no, in many cases, you couldn't actually write a clean extension um, that was independent of the um, core code, which meant third-party extensions are, are very hard to do. So part of the cleanup we did was to rework the whole framework that we used to load extensions. Um, so instead of this custom plugin loader, um, started using entry points, using Stevedore, which was written originally for Solometer, and I think it's being adopted by more and more OpenStack projects now, which makes a really simple interface for, for loading plugins. Um, so in the Nova V3 API, everything is technically a plugin, uh, and, and the nomenclature we're using is that the AP, all the API code is a plugin. The core set of plugins is still enforced, so th there's a, a subset that always has to be loaded or the Nova API will refuse to start up. And then the optional plugins are called extensions. Uh, and we're still we're still bending down exactly what's going to be core and what's not core. Um, we've added a bunch of stuff, I've got a list later and, and taken a bunch of stuff out, but as I mentioned to Robert earlier, key pairs is definitely in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now extensions can ed extend extensions quite easily, so you can, you can design your extensions to have further entry points, um, and that makes things a lot cleaner as well. So you, you have minimal changes to your, even your core extensions as well. They can live anywhere in the Python path now, so you're not restricted where you put them. Um, and there's ways of blacklisting and whitelisting what extensions um, you want loaded, which will make, hopefully make life a little bit easier for operators when they upgrade. They can make sure they don't accidentally get new functionality which they didn't intend to get. Um, and we have versioning. So that means we have a version number now that's exposed to the clients. Clients can say, you know, is, my, is the plugin or the extension this version? 
it is, then I know that I have this functionality. If it's not, I can fall back to the old behavior um, and, and, and work around it. So other things we're adding for the V3 API, um, a validation framework based on JSON schema definitions. Um, most of that has, the core of that has landed now. That should really tighten up the type checking that we do on parameters which are past the API. That's something which historically hasn't been done well, um, I guess based on how much experience the extension writer had. Sometimes they, they checked all the parameters, sometimes they didn't or they, they didn't do great checking. This station schema should make it a lot more uniform and, and pick up a lot more um, client errors. Uh, we've been looking at PCAN and WSME. Um, most of the OpenStack projects are going to this kind of framework for, the, for their APIs. During Icehouse, we're looking at doing PCAN. We don't have enough time to do WSME, but um, maybe in the J cycle we'll be looking at that. From my point of view, the, the big advantage of WSME is the ability to auto-produce documentation for the API, which would be very useful. Uh, one of the big issues with the V2 API is the documentation is all produced manually, which means that the developers update the API, they generate new API samples, and that tends to be where it stops, and the documentation isn't updated. So in many places, the V2 API spec is either wrong or just way out of date. Uh, we're adding Nova client support for the V3 API, um, and doing a lot, we're planning on doing a lot better Tempest coverage. The, currently, we've got about the same Tempest coverage as the V2 API. Um, so through I3, we'll be trying to add as much as we can, cover um, what's left. And we're also looking at a tasks API. I'm not quite sure of the status of that. Um, some of the Rackspace people might know. Um, that's Andrew Lasky's little project. Um, and that's basically so we can get better information on um, things like, you start, you, for example, if you're starting up a server or you're resizing a server, being able to get better information back about what's actually going on in the process um, and when it fails, what course, getting better um, uh, messaging back out of the system as to why it failed. So if you're running a REST API client, um, these are the kind of things that you'll need to change between V2 and V3. We've got a wiki page that is not quite complete, but we're trying to get it more up to date in terms of exactly what changes you'll need to make if you're adapting your, your programs. So I said return codes, we're fixing a lot of those. Um, XML JSON consistencies, naming consistencies. Um, there's the whole big tenant ID to project ID change. I think it originally was project ID, then kind of went to tenant ID, and now it's going back to project ID, and hopefully it will stay there across the OpenStack projects. Um, we're no longer proxying calls to um, Cinder and Neutron. So I guess originally because they were part of Nova, um, the APIs were there to do volume management and network stuff for the V3 API. If you want to do uh, volume or networking stuff, you go straight to Cinder or straight to Neutron. Um, we're possibly dropping support for Nova Network most of it has been removed already. Um, I think a decision is going to be made end of January as to whether Nova Network gets removed completely or we put it all back in again for the V3 API. Yep. By putting it all back in again, would that mean it was there in V3? And basically um, part of it was there, and we've, we've been just kind of cleaning up the, the craft which is left over. Um, so we'll just make it a lot cleaner to reject some of the parameters and those kind of things if, if they're past expecting that Nova Network will work. So you probably should revise the three last year about closing and say, just leave them test run. Yeah, yes, I do, I do need to reply to that. So yeah, um, it, for V3, it's yeah totally separate. That's correct. Um, so there's a few other cases where, where actions and the rest should have been methods instead they've been fixed. Um, using camel case consistently, sorry, using snake case consistently through the API rather than a mix of the two. Um, you can now filter what extensions are visible to clients through policy. 
um, where we've removed the project ID from the URLs that you specify to Nova, uh, because it's in the token which you pass to, the, the auth token which you pass to Nova anyway, so it's redundant. Um, and there's things like admin actions has been split. Um, it, it held a bunch of miscellaneous admin functionality like pause and lock and those kind of things. And to make it easier for deployers to only enable a subset of those things, um, we're splitting it into different extensions. Uh, so these are the main things, I'm not sure if I've covered everything here, that's been demoted from core, admin password, access IPs, a bunch of few things which aren't really needed in core, and a bunch of things which have been promoted as well. Uh, this is still in flux a little bit. Uh, it'll probably be nailed down in the, probably in the next month or so. Uh, now then there's a bunch of stuff which is not being ported to V3. Um, they fall into, I guess, a couple of categories. The part, some of them are networking specific extensions because when we're no longer proxying, we don't need those anymore. Um, there's others which have been just merged into other extensions. For example, the flavor type ones have just been merged into, a, into the flavor extension. <laughs> this was a result of having to write a new extension every time you added functionality. We had this kind of explosion of, of extensions. Um, and then there's others like personalities, which there's alternatives with like uh, the cloud in it stuff now, so you don't need it anymore. And it's always been a bit of a, a security issue. Um, some of the limit stuff has been rolled into quotas because we're kind of reporting the same information through two different areas and so it's, it, it's been amalgamated into one. Uh, so if you want to enable the V3 API for operators, um, there's an OS API V3 section in the NovaConf file so you can, it's set off by default at the moment. By the end of Ice House I think it'll be on by default. And we should also have a flag to turn the V2 API off by then. Um, so you can decide whether to run both or, or one. Um, there's extensions, whitelist and blacklist flags. Um, basically, you can just install your, your third party plugins wherever you want. Um, and we're also doing work on policy checks. Currently, the policy checks are done throughout the kind of the, the Nova stack right from the API down to the database level. The trouble with doing it at the really low level is by the time you've got to that point, you need to actually unwind quite a lot of the work that you've done if you suddenly realize that no, they don't have permission to do that. So we're bubbling everything up for all the APIs up to the, up to the API level, even for V2, but we're keeping backwards compatibility for the old V2 and EC2 APIs. So the policy names change the same, but for the V3 ones, they'll be, have V3 prefixes, so you know what's going on. Uh, we're also adding policy checks for the core functionality as well. With the V2 API, um, basically you don't have any control over who has access to them in many cases. It's either hard-coded to be admin or not, uh, and you'll be able to control that through the policy now. Um, for plugin developers, there's a new framework. We need to write some doco for it. Otherwise, at the moment, you kind of have to resort to reading existing plugins, which you don't really want people to have to do. Um, you shouldn't have to modify other extensions to put your extension in anymore. If you do, something's gone wrong, and please tell us. And we have to need to start bumping version numbers on extensions too. Um, you still can't make backwards incompatible changes, uh, but at least you can notify clients when you're offering new functionality. For backwards incompatible changes, we'll still need to do major version bumps. Uh, and I guess the other major change if you've written plugins before is now all API calls are expected to specify what um, ex exceptions or bad return codes they expect to come out of their APIs. The main reason we did this was we found in the V2 API there are actually quite a few code paths where it was erroring in an unexpected manner and kind of it was trying to be nice and translate this to a, um, to a reasonable HTTP return code, but we never got notified of bugs because people just assumed that it was working as expected. So now if you get something bubbling up that's unexpected, it actually gives a 500 and asks for a bug report through and hopefully we'll be able to get a backtrace and, 
find out what's going on and fix the problem. Uh, so Nova client changes. Um, Nova client, most of this has landed already. There's probably only about four or five more patches to come. Uh, it supports both the V2 and V3 API. Um, if you want to enable V3 support, you have to either use the V2 or V3. You can't have both at the same time. Um, there's a couple flags, either environment or command line flags you can use to enable it. Um, with the V3 Nova client, I've been removing most of the communication with anything but Nova. So again, for similar historical reasons, you used to be able to create volumes or create network information through Nova client. Instead, you'll be expected to use Cinder client or Neutron client. Um, we do still have some stuff going to Glance, so you can, for example, boot an image by name rather than UID, because it's a lot easier. And I think in the long term, we need to look at an OpenStack client which encompasses all of them. Um, because it's often, I think there's, there's a lot of cases where you want to do translations of UIDs to names and names to UIDs, which means talking to multiple services. But at the moment, with a whole lot of separate clients, we've got people re-implementing interfaces to all the different clients in the different clients, and that's a, a big overlap of code there. Um, and in V3, we've got no support for Nova Network stuff, though that may end up coming back in again. Um, so Icehouse 2 um, looks like that, that, that's what we've got planned to finish up. Um, the, I, the main things left really are, are the better Tempest coverage, the specification work, which we haven't got done yet. Um, and the tasks API. Um, so if you want to help, um, main thing we need really is more testing. So if you run up DevStack, the V3 API is enabled by default, so you can, it's pretty easy to play with if you want to play with it. Um, I'd be interested in you know, getting any feedback on bug reports about it if people use it and find issues with it. Um, and I, the other main way you can help is just to write Tempest tests. There's quite a large amount of coverage that we don't have for the V2 or V3 API. Um, and it's pretty easy to contribute new tests if it's a, an extension which you really want to use and you want, want working properly. Um, contributing a few tests would really be helpful. Okay, um, so if you've got any questions. Um, I think it'll be, it'll be at least a couple of cycles, probably quite a bit more. Um, I'd like to, personally I'd like to get rid of it as soon as possible because it's quite a bit of overhead in terms of both testing, because it doubles the test load really, um, plus you know we've got a whole mirrored tree of V2 to V3, um, but that'll have to be discussed a lot more, shall we say. Yeah, Michael? Um, well, Tempest will help that once we have the tests and it's nailed down. Um, the other issue is if we get, to, if we manage to implement um, WISME, then we get XML for free. Um, the only issue is the way that WISME translates the JSON to X, XML, and we need to make sure it's backwards compatible with what we've currently got hand coded. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yep. No, they the, they're mainly ones which hit the REST API directly. Um, I guess we don't. Ha I don't think we've got that many tests around which use Nova Client yet. We've got some scenario tests, and. Uh, is that in? Are they the scenario tests or? No, it's just purely client tests. Okay, um, I haven't looked at those. It just you just called Nova Client manually and. Yeah. Yeah. So I they I guess they'd be really easy to duplicate for us because we can just run them again with the flag turned on. 
Um, but uh, yeah, we're mostly after more REST API, API tests. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much.